Hello everybody, it's Jenny McGarvey and I am here today to share with you the Project Life Week 36. As you can see, I have the Project Life from Becky Higgins, the Amy Tangerine Mini Kit, and I'm going to be working with that one this week. I bought this kit mm, a few months back and I really do actually love it a lot. I'm really a big fan of the colors and the designs and I love the Cal Barteski script. So this mini kit was an obvious choice for me and I was super excited that it was a mini kit versus an entire core kit because I, while I love it, I don't know that I want you know that many of the exact same card or anything like that. So anyway, as you can see, I've thrown down my cards and I have chosen the cards to go with it, the three by fours. I'm looking through all of them to see which ones I want to use. I didn't go into this with a particular color scheme or anything like that in mind. I had a couple of different elements that I knew I would need based on the planning for this particular layout. So I knew that I would need only three by four cards for the left side and then some different needs on the right side. So it worked out and that's how my color scheme actually ended up coming into fruition was based on the needs of the page and not a predetermined color that I wanted to use. So as you can see, I have two filler cards on this one and then that green one will be a journaling card. It really could have also ended up being a filler card or it could have also just added a small photo there as well, but I will go ahead and use that frame for typewritten journaling. Now, as you can see, I've also pulled out the matching 6x6 Amy Tangerine paper pad, and I am just going to use a strip of patterned paper. I think it's actually the only one that I use on this entire layout on that photo of the eggs in the lower left-hand corner just to give it a little bit of embellishment but not go crazy or anything like that. And so I'll trim, I think, probably about an inch and a half strip and adhere it right there on that right side. And then also find in my stash a black label that I will use as well. Now, Caitlin Schaefer had a whole bunch of different colored labels on her blog that was perfect for any type of thing that you might need. I used a sorry, a whole bunch of different colors. I printed them out, I used the print and cut feature on my silhouette, and then I just cut a whole ton of them. So I actually have a whole bunch of different labels, which is perfect because I really do like to use them a lot in both my scrapbooking and my project life. So you can go to Caitlin Schaefer's blog and download those and use the print and cut feature on your silhouette as well. If you don't have a silhouette, you can still print them and hand cut them. I am just a terrible hand cutter and so I don't do it as often as other people might. Anyway, as you can see, I'm using those October afternoon alphabet stickers right on top of my label to notate this was dinner one night. I am off screen right now using the sewing machine to just add the tiniest bit of stitching right through those alphabet stickers. Now, I don't think that I have done anything about meals or anything in a while. I mean, aside from maybe a restaurant or ice cream or something like that, both of which are in this particular layout, but I do like to incorporate what we're eating for dinner. You know, that changes over time. You get favorites, you add favorites, those sorts of things. So I really do want to incorporate maybe a menu next week or, you know, soonish or whatever, because I do like incorporating that because they change. And I absolutely notice that so much as my kids are getting older, the things that they're willing to eat and the things that I'm making for dinner are just really changing. So that's another fun idea of something to include in your project life as well if maybe you're struggling for ideas or filling up a week or something like that. Plus, I thought all the egg yolks looked really cool in that bowl, so it really worked out perfectly. And it really just showcased that, you know, that's what we were having for dinner one night. Now, along with using this mini kit and that 6x6 pad, as you can see with the alphabet stickers, I've also pulled out a bunch of items from my stash as well. Um, some older pieces that I didn't know, like those white KI Memories stickers, but they were still perfect and they're still 
just great for project life. But so that's kind of what's fun maybe about every now and again changing things up and using different items from my stash. There is a wood veneer from a This Life Noted kit from Scraptastic Club and it works great. It's really cute and then it also happens to go with sort of the script feeling of this page as well. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down to this particular photo. And then I'm also going to go in my stash and pull out some enamel dots from Freckled Fawn. They're kind of a neon color scheme. And I really thought that was fun with sort of the green feeling of this page. And, you know, I don't use green very often. It's not a particular favorite of mine right now. So I had all of these green enamel dots and they work great with this photo. So there you have it. Now I'm going to, like I said, use that green journaling card for journaling, but I want to still embellish a couple of those photos. So when I opened my drawer to get something out, I'm not exactly sure what I was getting, maybe wood veneers or something like that, I found that Amy Tangerine die cut. And it's actually from a different collection. It's not from cut and paste, but it still works perfectly. The color is great. The whole overall feeling really goes. So I was like, hey, let's use that. And it was perfect for this particular photo because it was a brand new couch that we got, which is why it's in this layout. So hey, that's awesome, right? So now I'm going to use that other one, the lower right hand one, and add another one of those Caitlin Schaefer labels just to add the tiniest bit of journaling right on top of that photo. And I could have absolutely used the typewriter or gone with the hand journaling. Either one works. I just chose to use the hand journaling since I only needed a couple of words. But if I needed maybe a couple more words, I would have absolutely used the typewriter because I could have gotten it all on there since my handwriting is a little bit big. Now I'm putting a few little wood veneer stars on here and I'm using the stars because it kind of gives that feeling of sleeping, like good night under the stars, that kind of thing. So I thought the stars were a cute little addition to that particular photo and keeping it very simple. Now right now I'm off screen and I'm, as I've already mentioned that green journaling card a couple of times already, I am typing the journaling for that and for this particular week. And I'm happy to have used the typewriter because I've already got a couple of handwritten elements on this side and I will use my handwriting again on the other side for a journaling card. So I feel like this gives it a nice balance and I'm also able to get a lot of journaling in a smaller space. Whereas if I'd handwritten it, I would not have been able to say as much because I, as I already mentioned, my handwriting is fairly big and so I can't get a whole lot in there especially when it's a small space like that green card was like you already saw. So now that that page is finished, I can go ahead and move on to the right page, pulling out another one of my templates and getting started with my photos, just throwing those down. And as you can see, I have quite a few different photos for this particular week, the top two being soccer photos, which are great. And I do love those a lot because usually the light is really good because they're during the day and sometimes you'll get some shadows and stuff like that but when you're capturing the entire field like as I was in both of these we don't really have too much of that so I'm excited about that. Now as I throw down these photos I realized that I had forgotten to print a photo for that lower left hand corner and again you know I, it seems to happen quite a bit actually I don't get them all printed. Sometimes my selfie will skip one. I'm not sure why that happens. And it's probably not that big of a deal to your average person, but I print a lot of photos, so it seems to happen quite a bit to me. Um, I'm embellishing that top right photo with just one of those stickers. I believe it's KI Memories. I'm not exactly sure. They have kind of a translucent feel, so you can see behind them just a little bit. And I really do love the way that it looks on top of that sky up there. So as you can see, I need to find two cards to go uh, in those 3 by 4 spaces. I don't need a 4 by 6 for that lower one. I, that's really meant to be a photo 
and not a filler card or a journaling card. So I found two that I really like, and I love that white one with the grid and the colors. It's just really fun and pretty, and it really does match super well. And it looks great with these thickers from that same collection. Now I decide that ultimately that I'm gonna to try to print that photo that I'm missing, and I actually come up with a happy surprise instead, but you'll see that in just a minute. Now here I'm gonna go ahead and make that green four by six card a date card. I'm just adding those small October afternoon letter stickers, and then I will go ahead and use those thickers that I did already up there to make 13. I will use those for the actual dates down below. That's kind of the good part about pack, packages of thickers that have already been partially used. I actually don't, I find myself frustrated quite a bit because I'll use up certain key letters and I can't spell out lots of things. But in a situation like this, the letters are, the numbers, excuse me, are left. And so I can totally use those for my project life because often you need numbers for dates and things of that nature. So that is one benefit of thickers that have already been all used up. Now, like I mentioned already on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and use my handwriting for the journaling on this page. And that's twofold. I've already used the typewriter, so I could have absolutely used it again. That wouldn't have been a problem. It wouldn't have been weird or anything like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and handwrite it. And it balances the typewriting on the other side. And this is also sort of about my son's birthday dinner. So I like that handwritten touch for the more personal aspect of that as well. I'm just using my Sharpie pen. These cards are a very, very matte, so I don't need anything to protect from smearing, no permanent marker or anything like that. So this is just fine. Now, as you can see, I have another gray card chosen for that right side, and I am going to embellish it just a little bit and then also add journaling to it as well and I will use the typewriter for this one. It is, again, it's great because I have that handwritten one in the center and then sort of the anchoring of this one and then the one from the left page sort of not only ties it all together, but it makes the page a little bit more interesting because you have different types of journaling going on, or at least that's what I think. Now while I finish up that journaling, you'll see that I did find that photo that I referred to a little while ago. I had forgotten that they took this photo at the restaurant and it sort of actually made me chuckle and I didn't really necessarily think I'd use it for anything. I thought it would get stuck in a drawer or on a bulletin board, but since I didn't really want to take the time to go back through my camera roll and find the photo from dinner that I had been thinking of, this one was perfect. And you know what? It's actually perfect because it shows all the people that were at dinner and where we went and I don't even have to do a thing to it. So while I felt like it was a little bit cheesy, it's totally fine. Now I'm back from typewriting that journaling card and I'm just gonna stick one of those KI stickers on there. Look, it's totally perfect. And then I am going to also use my date stamp roller and go ahead and stamp that right on there using my traditional VersaFine ink, which is my favorite and my go-to ink. It really just gives you a super awesome image. I don't have too many problems with my stamping using it, and it works on pretty much everything. I'm also going to adhere this one wood star wood veneer, and I'm also going to use the tiny attacher, but it's really just because I wanted to, not at all because I needed to. I just wanted the way that that would look. And I'm also adding a sticker as well. Now, I'm getting very close to the end, and I hope you've enjoyed this look at my project life for this week. And thank you so much for watching.